So, uh, so remember to try to watch that, watch the, what the video that's online because it's going to be. Well, we are adding some extra material onto these, right? Uh, things that I've recorded with a partner, so you'll have a better visual of what we're doing. So, um, so try to make sure you watch those. Again, the camera angle will be a little bit better. I think you'll be able to uh, to see see me and see things a little clearer as well, and I think it'd be to your advantage. Plus, it gives you an extra time, an extra day to practice, right? So our classes are a little shorter than a regular class because that's kind of how we have to do it. I don't have the partners to work with and stuff like that. But if um, if you um, watch the video, you you'll have again a better experience, I think, and I think um, it'll be worthwhile. All right, cool. So let's do some warm ups, right? Let's do some jumping jacks. Ready? Begin. And yeah, make straddle stance, circles, tighter and faster, really fast, really tight, backwards really fast, really tight, really fast, bigger, giant ones, awesome. Put your hand in your belt, if you have a belt on it, just by your belly, bring your hand circle forward, backwards. Other hand, forwards, backwards, hands on your belt, side bends, one, two, each, knee, one, two, each, knee, one, two, each, knee, twisters, ready, one, two, each, knee, make sure your, uh, your head turns and follows the back elbow. Four, One, two, each knee. One, two, awesome. All right, legs out a little wider. Hands on your legs, slide down, grab your ankles. Stretch down in the middle. Go over to your right side, stretch down. Go over to your left side, stretch it down. Stretch in the middle. Go a little wider. Stretch down the center. Go to the right side. Stretch it down. Other side. Stretch it down. In the middle. All the way down, low as you can. Go a little wider now. Get out to the maximum you can go. Let's go over to the right side and stretch. Left side and stretch. Middle, stretch it down. Okay, good job. Walk out on your hands. Let's do some shoulder touches. Ready? Here we go. Try to stay with me. Come on. Walk it back. Stretch it down one more time. Have a seat. Figure fours. Stretch it down and back. Down and back. Down and hold it down. Chin to your knee. Keep that foot up. Switch your feet. Stretch it down and back. Down and back. Down and hold it down. Chin to your knee. All right, legs out wide. Here we go. Stretching right, two hands, two hands. Stretching left. Let's try something a little different today. We're gonna to do sort of a dynamic stretch where we're just gonna kind of plop down. So the 
we're going to kind of stretch down. So just kind of plop down of the side, plop down. So use your weight to help stretch those muscles out. Just plop it down. So it's done faster than usual, right? Let it come down. Stretch. Stretch. Good. All right, let's go out to the middle now. Stretch it down and back. Down and back. Down and down. Good. Feet together. This will be the last one. Let's go down and back up. Let's just say yes, breathe out. That's why we have you say something each time. I want you to make sure that you're breathing out each time you go down. Ready? Yes. And. Yes. Don't bend. Yes. Keep the legs straight. Don't bend those knees. Keep them straight. Keep your feet pointing up. Yes. Yes. And yes. All right. Awesome. All right. Good. Shake it out. All right. Let's just do some kicks. Everybody put your right foot back. Hands up. Front kicks. Ready? Hike. Ready? Hike. Make sure you key iron. Hike. Ready? Hike. Ready? Hike. Keep your hands up. Ready? Hike. Ready, hike. Switch feet. Keep those hands up. Ready, hike. 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 Good. Switch your feet back. Now, right, let's do some roundhouse kicks. Keep those hands up. Ready, hike. Ready, hike. Ready, hike. Ready, hike. Ready, hike. Ready, hike. Switch feet. Ready, hike. 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 Awesome. Let's see what I have here. All right, let's do some side snap kicks. Everybody face me in a side facing horse stance. Hands up. Ready, hike. 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 And hike. Switch feet. Here we go. Hike. 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 All right, we're going to do some back kicks. I have a bag here. I'm just going to tap the bag lightly. You can do them in the air. Unless somebody's there to hold the pillow for you. Remember, we look over the shoulder that we're kicking with. So I'm kicking with my right foot. I want to look over my right shoulder. Okay, here we go. Hey! Other side. Hey! 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 Good. All right. Good. All right. Everybody should be warmed up nice now. Do some good basics. All right. I want to practice some stepping today. You know, we do this in class sometimes and. Some of these have it pretty good, some of them struggle a little bit with these, so let's try to get good form on these, all right? So we'll start off, we're going to start off with a, uh, horse stances. I'm going to face you this way first, just to demonstrate, and then I'll face, I'll come sideways. So from here, we're going to do a cross step. With rear foot, going to cross over and down. So that's one step. So this is one step, right? And your feet are always pointed in the same direction. So uh, let's face this way, and we'll start back here a little bit. Okay? Keep your hand, eyes, and head facing the front. Stepping across the front. Hey! 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 Turn to the rear. Hey! Stepping across the front. Hey! 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 Turn to the rear. Hey! Let's go 
on the other side now. Here we go. Stepping across the front. Let's step across the rear now. Across the rear. Hey! 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 Turn to the rear. Hey! Going back the other way. Hey! 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 So your feet always end, end up always pointing in this to the same side. We don't change those. So what would be an example of why we would step that particular way? Why step across the front as opposed to the rear, that sort of thing? Well, for example, if I wanted to close the gap on this guy, right, and throw maybe a hand technique, right, I might step across the front and throw a back fist right away, right? Step across the front and back fist. I might want to throw a side snap kick. Across the front, side snap kick. But if I wanted to throw a, th throw a side thrust kick, the better position would be to step across the rear. Why? So as I turn here, you notice how my hip is into the target? That's what I want. When I'm throwing a snap kick, I don't want that. I want to be able to bring the kick out this way, right? When I throw the thrust kick, a good thrust kick, I want to be this way anyway. So if I step this way, I can throw the kick this way better, right? So that would be some of the reasons we would use the stepping that way. All right, let's get uh, the left foot forward into a side facing horse stance again. Hands are up. We're going to do a shuffle step. Ready? Hey! 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 Turn to the rear. Hey! 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 Turn to the rear. Good. So, those are all from the horse stance. How about from the front stance, though? We have some stepping and some turns and different things from a front stance. So let's start with the front stance. Let's put your right foot back. Make sure that both feet are pointing pretty much straight ahead. Your front knee's bent, your back leg's straight, your back's nice and straight, your hands are up. We're going to do a U-step. Any stepping in karate, any stepping that you're doing, you never want your feet to come up high off the floor. You always want them to be really close, almost like you're skating, really close to the floor, almost touching, right? So let's do a nice U-step. Let's bring it up and step. Try to keep your head at about the same level, too. So you shouldn't be coming up like this and down, right? You should all maintain the same level. Stepping forward. Hey! 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 Stepping back. Hey! 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 Good. How about if we wanted to shuffle here? Shuffle. I want to just increase that distance or decrease that distance between me and my opponent. Like right here, I can't reach with my hands, right? But let's say I wanted to throw a quick quick punch. I, a, a little shuffle, boom, I'm there, right? A little shuffle, bam, I'm there with the other one, right? So just a quick little shuffle forward. So how do we shuffle from a front stance? Let me show you sideways. So from here, get back here, we can see my feet better. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push off the back leg and step and then slide the back leg up. Push off, slide up. Turn the other way. Push off, slide up. Push off, slide up. Right? And, it, and this, is, this is something you can do really, really fast. It, it, you, can, you can get right there. So I'm, I'm here with this guy. I can just slide up and throw my technique right away. I mean, it, you're there like that fast. As opposed to trying to take a step Taking a step um, has a couple of disadvantages. So just watch me here for a second. Just pay attention. So if I'm in my fighting position here, I'm turned a little sideways, right? And I want to shuffle. That's quick, and I don't have to expose anything. If I take a step, it's not as fast, but here's, here's, the, here's the, uh, the smart thing about this. Pay attention. Look at this slow motion. As I come up, where am I right now? I'm open. Before I get up, right? As I step, at this point, I'm open. So by shuffling, 
I don't give I don't give that exposure, right? It's just there. It's just there. I keep my defense. If I have to step up, even though it's fast, it's a split second that I'm here and I'm open, right? And you should actually think about that when you're sparring too. If you're sparring with somebody and you're pretty close to them, right? And you want to change your feet. If you're pretty close to them, you don't want to go forward unless you're throwing a kick and you're attacking, that's different. So if I throw a kick, bam, and I step forward, that's okay, or some hand. But I don't want to just do this. Because remember, it's the same thing. As I'm getting to this point, I'm open, right? So, so from, if that's the case, I need, to, I need to change feet. I need to step backwards if I'm close to them. If I'm, if, I, if I'm at a distance, it doesn't matter. But if I'm close to them, I step back, not forward, right? Because I am open for that little bit of time. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you from, uh, actually show you two more things from, from here. So, a lot of times when we're doing some of our drills and stepping and striking, we want to be able to turn to the rear from our front stance. So, you know, from the horse stance, you just do that and turn to the rear. But from a front stance, it's different. So, watch my feet. So, from here, if I want it to turn directly behind me, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Place one foot behind the other, pivot and turn. One foot, turn. Right? I can make a quick turn that way. Right? Watch again quick. One, two. And I stay on the line. So I want you to just take an imaginary line right down my back and watch when I turn. It's in the same place, right? I'm in the same thing. So if I had an opponent behind me, bam, I'm turning real quickly right at him and I'm facing him. Okay? All right, cool. All right, what I want to do for a little bit is I want to work on something called parries. So, everybody knows what a block is, right? A block, you take the force of a punch or an attack and you stop it. You block it, right? You stop it. A parry's a little different. Instead of stopping the punch or the kick, you're redirecting it. What does that mean? Well, punch is coming at my face. Rather than have to try to stop it with a block, I'm going to move it to the side. So I don't have to stop it. I have to just redirect the travel past me, right? So as the attack comes in, I'm now stepping to the side, right? And I'm parrying out of the way. I might use this hand to cover. So we'll do a few of these. Let's just, uh, let's just assume you and pretend you have an imaginary opponent who's attacking down low, punching you in the belly or something, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use two principles here. We're going to use the redirecting principle of a parry, but we're also going to get off of the line. Remember I talk about that when you're sparring? I say you don't want to always stay straight on. You want to get off the line of attack. This is even more important in self-defense. You don't want to be facing power with power, especially there's a chance that the person attacking you is going to be bigger and stronger. So you don't want to do that directly, but you want to get off on the angle. You want to get off of the line. If somebody's rushing me here, I want to get off of the line of attack. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be facing straight off like an, like an open ready stance. And I want you to imagine an attack is coming low. So what we're going to do is we're going to get off the line to this direction, and we're going to use a parry. Open hand, parry. So this is what it looks like here. So I've deflected the blow. Now I'm going to shift back and punch to the face. Let's try the other side. I parry, punch. It's nice too because your hips are already in a good position for power. Parry, punch. Right? Parry, punch. Let's try a couple faster. So that's a, those are a low attack. Well, how about if it's a high attack, right? So it's a high attack coming in. I'm going to do it a little differently on a high attack or a middle attack. I'm going to use the same side hand as the attacker. So let's assume the attacker is coming at me. Let's say they're coming at me with a right hand this way, right? They're coming at me with a right hand, right to my face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to parry the blow that way move my body that way. So I step to the side and I parry. Now I take this hand 
and this hand goes on the inside. Can you see it? On the inside of the other hand. So the parry here, I bring this here and I catch his arm. So this is called a cover. So I'm controlling his arm. I'm not just letting him punch again. So he throws the punch, I parry, cover, I grab on, right? And now I can pull him in if I want to, maybe an elbow to the face, right? So watch again uh, from here, right? So he comes in, I parry, I grab, I pull him in, bam, I elbow to the face. Techniques, at least for the most part. These are wrist releases. This is when somebody's grabbing your wrist, one wrist, two wrists, whatever. And so what we're going to do is we're going to learn to defend against these, and we're going to use some, some uh, very, very basic techniques to do that. Again, realize that even though these are simple and in most cases annoyance techniques, they could be the, the, the beginning of a much more serious attack. For example, someone grabbing you to pull you into a car or to pull you into a hotel room or whatever it might be. So again, it's good, it's good to know how to get out of these quickly. So the first one we're going to do is what we call a same side wrist release. Chris is grabbing with his right to the same side which is my left. The very first thing that I'm going to do as he grabs me is make a fist. The reason I'm making a fist is, is that Chris could very easily grab my fingers and put me in a very painful and a, bad, a much worse situation than I'm in. So by making the fist, I prevent that. Now, what I want to do is, Chris is a bigger guy than me, and, and typically bigger people attack smaller people. But in any, in any case, what I want to do is I want to try to get as much of my power, my, my body, use my body to break this release, not rely on the power of my arms. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be stepping back as I do this release using my opposite leg. And just always remember it's the opposite leg, whatever hand they have. The, th the other key point in this is what I'm going to do is as I make the fist, I'm going to start to turn my wrist as I make this release because what I want to do is I want to take the edge of my wrist and I want to have it point to the opening on the tip of his thumb. That's the weakest part of his grip and that's where I want to pull. Even if it's here, I want to start to turn it as I make my release and so I can open here. Okay, so what we're going to do from here, we'll start again. Chris grabs, same side, I make a fist. Now I'm going to step back with the opposite leg and I'm going to twist that wrist as I showed you and step way back into a deep stance and jerk my hand back all the way to my shoulder. Now, I'm doing this in one motion. So what happens is I twist, I step back, and I break. And notice my eye contact remains directly on him. I've escaped the, the, the hold, but I haven't defeated my attacker. I don't know what his next move is going to be. And again, this is situational. If this happens where someone grabs you at a party and they're a little drunk, maybe all you need to do from here is back off, leave me alone. That might be the extent of what you need to do, get back into your assertive behavior. But the situation might dictate that what we do is as we make the release, the hand is already here, we're going to attack with what we call a back fist strike and using the back of the knuckles and then step back into our assertive position if that's what we need. We may need to go further with it. The attack comes here, I make the release, I throw the back fist, I strike with a palm heel strike, and I drive in with some knee kicks. Bang, maybe into the face. Maybe finish up with an elbow technique. Again, depending on the situation. Situation dictates the rule. So that's what we call our first, first defense against the same side wrist release. The next defense we're going to work with is what we call a cross wrist grip. This is where Chris's um, left hand is going to come across and grab my left hand. So again, the first thing we're going to do is make that fist for the same reason we said before. Now, to try to use the exact technique that we used in the same side wrist release won't work very well because if I start to pull back here, if you notice I'm pulling against his entire hand, what I want to do is I need to get again against that thumb. That's, again, the weakest part of his grip. So instead of coming straight over, what I'm going to do is make a very small circle over the top. It's important I go over the top so that I can work against the thumb. So from here, I just make that circle, and then I take this foot and step back, and it's the same then as we did in the, in the previous technique. So once again, he grabs, I make the fist, I make a small circle, I step back, I strike, and then I follow up with very basic 
very simple techniques and finish them off. So we can do that one at more of a normal speed. So we attack, circle out, back, boom, drive in, drive in, and then finish off again wherever I need to. Basic technique. Okay, the next one we're going to work on is what we call a two-on-one wrist release. So Chris is going to be grabbing my left hand with both of his hands this time. Now obviously, he's got a little more of an advantage here. He's got, he's got the strength of both of his arms. So what we want to do is we want to assist by using the other hand. So we're going to take this hand and we're going to reach in and we're going to grab our own hand. If you could just release that for a second, Chris. This is what it looks like, okay? We're going to be reaching right in and doing a grip on our other wrist. So once again, Chris grabs, I reach in. Again, always the opposite leg. I step back, same basic technique, same basic follow through, again, and continue. So again, situation that's not dangerous, back off, leave me alone. Situation that's more dangerous, he attacks, maybe I'm gonna strike him first to loosen him up a little bit. Just a quick strike, could be an eye poke, could be a slap. Then I reach in and grab, break, follow through. Man, if you notice, most of my head attacks, I'm using an open palm. And the reason is simple. Most people, many, many times, break their hands by punching somebody in the face or head. It's very, very easy to break your hands. So you have to be very careful with that. So it's a lot safer, and the impact on a palm heel strike really is just as effective as a punch. Okay, so that's what we call a two-on-one wrist release. The next one we're going to do is what we call a double wrist, or two hands on two. Okay? Now, in this one, it differs than the first three that we did, in that rather than stepping backwards, it's more effective than this particular technique if, if I step forward. Okay? So we're going to clasp the hands together the same way we did it in the, in the last one, very similar, right together, and I'm going to step in right between his feet as I drive my elbows up this way. And from here, again, depending on the situation, I can just back off, or more dangerous situation, I step in, bam, bam, strike. Okay, so, again, situation dictates the rule. If need be, you can follow up with some strong techniques. If, you, if it's, again, a nuisance situation, you just escape the situation, get into your assertive posture, leave me alone, and back off. 